2020 is shaping up to be an exciting year for animated movies, with each major studio offering at least one high profile release. Amongst the roster are original adventures, new generation reboots, highly anticipated sequels, CG live action hybrid flicks, films which are likely to be sleeper hits, and others which will likely go on to be some of the year's biggest turkeys. In this video I'll go over all the major animated releases for the year, offering up a preview of what we can expect to drop into cinemas and onto streaming platforms across the next 12 months. Please note release dates given in this video are only tentative and are subject to change. It's entirely possible that movies will be delayed, pushed forward or cancelled altogether. Before we go any further, don't forget to give this video a like, it does wonders in getting my content out there. And also weigh in down in the comments below with your most anticipated animated picks of the year. And at that, let's get into it. First up, let's take a look at the theatrical releases for 2020. Kicking off 2020's lineup is Universal Pictures' live action animation hybrid Doolittle. Based on the classic 1922 novel The Voyages of Dr. Doolittle and a reboot of the previous Dr. Doolittle films. Originally set for a release in December 2019, the movie will now open in Australia on the 16th of January, in the USA on the 17th of January, in the UK on the 7th of February, and across Europe and Asia between January and March. Universal's synopsis for Doolittle reads, after losing his wife seven years earlier, the eccentric Dr. John Doolittle, famed doctor and veterinarian of Queen Victoria's England, hermits himself away behind the high walls of Doolittle Manor, with only his menagerie of exotic animals for company. But when the young queen falls gravely ill, a reluctant Doolittle is forced to set sail on an epic adventure to a mythical island in search for a cure, regaining his wit and courage as he crosses old adversaries and discovers wondrous creatures. The doctor is joined on his quest by a young self-appointed apprentice and a raucous coterie of animal friends. Stephen Gagan. Next up is another hybrid film. The highly controversial release from Paramount Pictures, Sega Entertainment, Marza Animation and Blur Studio, Sonic the Hedgehog. A film which was infamously bumped from its late 2019 release slate in an unprecedented move by the studio to completely redesign the lead character following fan backlash to the original trailer. The movie will open in Australia Australia on the 13th of February, in the US and the UK on the 14th of February, and across Europe and Asia between February and June. Paramount synopsis for Sonic reads, based on the global blockbuster video game franchise from Sega, Sonic the Hedgehog tells the story of the world's speediest hedgehog as he embraces his new home on Earth. In this live action adventure comedy, Sonic and his new best friend Tom team up to defend the planet from the evil genius Dr. Robotnik and his plans for world domination. The movie marks Sonic the Hedgehog's big screen debut if we don't count the 1990s anime film which was released as straight to home video on the western market. As a fan of the Sonic games I'm definitely looking forward to checking this one out but I would be lying if I said I didn't feel pretty lukewarm to the trailers so far. Sonic the Hedgehog stars Ben Schwartz as the voice of Sonic alongside James Marsden and Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik. It is directed by first time feature director Jeff Fowler. The following week Fox and Disney Disney will release Call of the Wild, a live action photorealistic animation hybrid based on the classic 1903 novel by Jack London. It will release in Australia on the 20th of February, in the USA and the UK on the 21st of February, and across Europe and Asia between February and April. Disney's synopsis for the film reads, The Call of the Wild vividly brings to the screen the story of Buck, a big hearted dog whose blissful domestic life is turned upside down when he is suddenly uprooted from his California home and transplanted to the exotic wilds of the Alaskan Yukon during the gold rush of the 1890s. As the newest rookie on a male delivery dog sled team and later its leader, Buck experiences the adventure of a lifetime, ultimately finding his true place in the world and becoming his own master. While Call of the Wild may appear to be more live action than animation, Disney has described it as a live action animation hybrid, which employs cutting edge visual effects and animation technology in order to render the animals 
in the film has fully photorealistic and emotionally authentic characters. With VFX Studio MPC, the team behind Disney's photorealistic Lion King remake handling the animation. Though a big reader of classic literature, Call of the Wild is one that I am yet to read. However, I absolutely adore the 1935 film version starring Clark Gable, so I'm very excited for this. The trailer looks great, and while there's something a little uncanny valley about the animation here, I'm hoping it's cleaned up a bit for the cinema. The film stars a live action cast including Harrison Ford, Karen Gillan, Dan Stevens, Omar Sy, and Bradley Whitford. The first animated release from Disney for 2020 is Onward, the first of two original Pixar adventures for the year. The movie will hit cinemas in the USA and the UK on the 6th of March, in Australia almost an entire month later on the 2nd of April, and across Europe and Asia between March and April. Disney's synopsis reads, Set in a suburban fantasy world, Disney and Pixar's Onward introduces two teenage elf brothers who embark on an extraordinary quest to discover if there is still a little magic left out there, to somehow find a way to spend one last magical day with their father. Written by Monsters University writer and director Dan Scanlon, Onward looks to be an incredibly unique and exciting Pixar adventure, though many have noted it seems to be a narrative and visual departure from the studio's previous work. For me, that's pretty intriguing, and I'm looking forward to seeing the studio dive into new territory. Onward stars the vocal talents of Tom Holland and Chris Pratt, and a supporting cast which includes Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Octavia Spencer, and Ali Wong. It is also directed by Scanlon. Up next is yet another animation live-action hybrid film, this time from Sony Pictures Animation. Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway, based on the characters created by Beatrix Potter. The film, which, like the first, was filmed in Australia and the UK, and will open in those markets first, hitting Australian cinemas on the 19th of March, with a UK release on the 27th of March, and a US release following on the 3rd of April. It will open across Europe and Asia between March and April. Sony's synopsis for the film reads, Old tricks, new mischief. In Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway, the lovable rogue is back. Bo, Thomas, and the rabbits have created a makeshift family, but despite his best efforts, Peter can't seem to shake his mischievous reputation. Adventuring out of the garden, Peter finds himself in a world where his mischief is appreciated. But when his family risks everything to come looking for him, Peter must figure out what kind of bunny he wants to be. Peter Rabbit is one of my most beloved childhood characters, along with the rest of the inhabitants of Beatrix Potter's worlds. The 2018 movie, however, has to be one of the worst I've watched for a very, very long time. So suffice to say, this sequel is nothing that I'm looking forward to seeing, or really even intending to see. However, the first film obviously had a decent audience, it's one for the really young kids, and I'm sure that they will enjoy this one. The film will once again star James Corden as the voice of Peter Rabbit, alongside the voices of Daisy Ridley, Margot Robbie, Elizabeth Debicki, and Rose Byrne, who also leads the live-action cast alongside Donald Gleeson. Following is perhaps the year's first animated dud, coming from DreamWorks Animation and Universal Studios, Trolls World Tour, the sequel to the 2016 surprise box office hit, Trolls. The movie will open in the UK on the 20th of March, in Australia on the 26th of March, and in the USA on the 17th of April. It will open across Europe and Asia between March and May. DreamWorks' synopsis reads, In an adventure that will take them well beyond what they've known before, Poppy and Branch discover that they are but one of six different troll tribes scattered over six different lands and devoted to six different kinds of music. Their world is about to get a lot bigger and a whole lot louder. A member of hard rock royalty, Queen Bar Barb, aided by her father King Thrash, wants to destroy all other kinds of music to let rock reign supreme. With the fate of the world at stake, Poppy and Branch, along with their friends, set out to visit all the other lands to unify the trolls in harmony against Barb, who's looking to upstage them all. Personally, I haven't bothered to see the first Trolls movie as it doesn't really appeal to me whatsoever. Same can be said for the sequel, which looks nothing but a big glittery dud to me based on the trailers. If recent animated sequel trends or anything to go by, I imagine World Tour probably won't see the same unexpected success as the first. The movie stars the voice talents of Anna Kendrick, Justin Timberlake, James Corden, Jamie Dornan, Sam Rockwell, Kenan Thompson, Kelly Clarkson, 
Mary J. Bly and Ozzy Osbourne. It's directed by Trolls co-director Walt Dawn and first time feature director David P. Smith. Next up is one of my most anticipated of the year from Warner Animation Group, Scoob. The first theatrical Scooby-Doo adventure since the early 2000s live action films and a new franchise reboot. It will be released in the USA and the UK on the 15th of May, in Australia on the 18th of June and across Europe and Asia between May and August. Warner's synopsis reads, The first full length animated Scooby-Doo adventure for the big screen is the never before told stories of Scooby-Doo's origins and the greatest mystery in the career of Mystery Inc. Scoob reveals how lifelong friends Scooby and Shaggy first met and how they joined with young detectives Fred, Velma and Daphne to form the famous Mystery Inc. Now with hundreds of cases solved and adventures shared, Scooby and the gang face their biggest, most challenging mystery ever, a plot to unleash the ghost dog Cerberus upon the world. As they race to stop the global dog apocalypse, the gang discovers that Scooby has a secret legacy and an epic destiny greater than anyone imagined. Scoob is set to be the first film in a potential Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe and will also feature such characters as the Blue Falcon, Dino Mutt, Captain Caveman and the Teen Angels. As an enormous Hanna-Barbera fan since childhood, this has incredibly exciting potential for me and I just hope it sticks the landing. Likewise, as a lifelong Scooby fan, I can't wait to see this fresh take on the property. I love the simplistic animation style and I'm looking forward to heading into the cinema for another Scooby adventure. Controversially, a Aside from longtime Scooby voice artist Frank Welker, who returns as Scooby Doo, the movie has opted for A list voice talent instead of the regular television cast, many of which have been voicing the characters for two decades. Instead, the movie stars Zac Efron as Fred, Amanda Seyfried as Daphne, Gina Rodriguez as Velma, and Will Forte as Shaggy. It also sports a supporting cast, including Mark Wahlberg, Jason Isaacs, Ken Jong, Tracy Morgan, Kiersey Clemens, and McKenna Grant. Race. Next is one I'm incredibly intrigued about from Paramount Animation and Nickelodeon, the SpongeBob movie Sponge on the Run. The third theatrical adding for SpongeBob and his pals under the sea, and the first in CG animation. The movie will open in the US and the UK on the 22nd of May, in Australia on the 9th of July, and across Europe and Asia between May and December. Paramount synopsis reads, They're not in Bikini Bottom anymore. After SpongeBob's beloved pet snail Gary is snail napped, he and Patrick embark on an epic adventure to the lost city of Atlantic City to bring Gary home. As they navigate the delights and dangers on this hilarious rescue mission, Spongebob and his pals prove there's nothing stronger than the power of friendship. I've personally never been a Spongebob fan, not because I don't like it, simply because I just never got around to watching it properly, though I have liked what little I have seen. Regardless, going off the trailer for this one, I'm actually really looking forward to it. The animation looks stunning and the story looks funny, heartfelt and heartwarming. It stars the regular Spongebob voice cast including Tom Kenny and Clancy Brown and will also star Aquafina with a live action appearance by Keanu Reeves. It's directed by regular Spongebob writer and developer Tim Hill. Next up is Pixar's second feature for the year, Soul, which will hit cinemas in Australia on the 18th of June, in the USA and the UK on the 19th of June and across Europe and Asia between June and October. Disney's synopsis reads, Ever wonder where your passion, your dreams and your interests come from? What is it that makes you, you? In 2020, Pixar Animation Studios takes you on a journey from the streets of New York City to the cosmic realms to discover the answers to life's most important questions. Soul will mark the very first Pixar film to star a black lead and a predominantly black cast. It will star the voice talents of Jamie Foxx as Joe Gardner, a talented pianist whose dreams are cut short thanks to a tragic accident, and Tina Fey as 21, a lost soul who promises to bring him back to his body. Having loved Pixar's existential dramedies in the past, I'm totally pumped for this one as it certainly sounds like it could be an all-time favourite. Alongside Fox and Fey, it also stars Darby Diggs, Felicia Rashad and Questlove. It's directed by two-time Academy Award winning Pixar director Pete Doctor of Up, Inside Out and Monsters Inc. Next comes the fifth installment in Illumination Entertainment and Universal Studios 
Nintendo's Despicable Me franchise, and second in its Minions spin-off prequel series, Minions The Rise of Gru. It's expected to land in the USA on the 3rd of July, in the UK on the 4th of July, and across Europe and Asia between June and August. No date has yet been set for Australia. Not much is known about this one just yet, there's been no official trailers, synopsis or even artwork release, meaning it could be a prime contender for a delay. However, judging by the title, one could assume the film will see the Minions' continued plight to find a leader as seen in their first solo outing, and will likely see their first meeting with Gru and how they came to be his underlings. Somewhat of a Minions Gru origin, if you will. I'll be honest, the Despicable Me franchise is an enormous guilty pleasure of mine, and I'm definitely looking forward to what else is in store for us. The movie will once again star Steve Carell as Gru and Pierre Coffin as the Minions. It's directed by Minions and Despicable 3 co-director Carl Balder and first-time director Brad Abelson. Following will be Fox Animation's Bob's Burgers the Movie, based on the Fox television series which is currently in its 10th season. The film, which has been long awaited by the series' cult fanbase, will release in the US on the 17th of July. Not much has been revealed about the movie so far, though series co-creator Lauren Bouchard has noted that it will take the characters on an epic adventure that will scratch every itch the fans of the show have ever had and will also work for all the good people who've never seen it. I, in fact, am one of those good people. This show is one I've never been particularly interested in, and from the brief bits I have seen, it's not something I'm keen in checking out anytime soon. While I'm sure fans of the series will be clamouring for this one, I think it's a hard pass for me. The movie will feature the regular series cast, including H. John Benjamin and Kristen Schaal. It's written by Bouchard and co-creator Jim Dautereve. No director has been attached. Following next will be a hybrid animation from Walt Disney Studios, The One and Only Ivan. Based on the best-selling book by K.A. Applegate, in turn inspired by true events. Ivan will hit cinemas in the USA and the UK on the 14th of August, across Europe between the 12th and 14th of August, and in Australia on the 24th of September. While Disney is yet to release an official synopsis for the film just yet, the following is the synopsis for Applegate's book. Based on the true story of a uniquely talented gorilla and the other animals who share a communal habitat at a suburban shopping mall, the one and only Ivan is an unforgettable tale about the beauty of friendship, the power of visualisation and the significance of the place we call home. This is another one that's been kicking around the studio for quite a few years and promises to be a hybrid live action CG animated film, featuring real life humans and animated animal characters. As Disney's originals haven't fared too well in cinemas recently, Ivan has odds weighed against it, and in this climate may be another best suited for Disney+. Plus. However, it has an interesting premise and a great cast, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it shapes up. One and only Ivan stars the voice talents of Angelina Jolie, Sam Rockwell, Danny DeVito, and Helen Mirren, with a live action performance from Brian Cranston. It is directed by Thea Sharrick and produced by Jolie. Sony Pictures Animation have announced original animated adventure The Mitchells vs. The Machines for late 2020, with a release date supposedly set for the USA for the 18th of September and in the UK for the 9th of October. Again, this is another for which very little has actually been revealed, including any kind of concept material, and another I can honestly see being delayed until next year. However, Sony did release a logline for this one via Deadline, which reads, The Mitchells are a dysfunctional but loving family whose road trip is interrupted by a tech uprising that threatens mankind. All around the world, the electronic devices people love, from phones to self-driving cars to a sleek new line of personal robots, turn on humanity. With the help of two malfunctioning robots and the family's delightfully overweight pug, the Mitchells will have to get past their problems and work together to save each other and the world. This certainly sounds interesting, though not entirely unique in its premise, so I'll be leaving thoughts until we have something solid on this one. It's been written by Gravity Falls alumni Michael Reander and Jeff Rowe and produced by Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and the Lego movies Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. Next up, Walt Disney Animation Studios offers their annual Christmas release, Raya and the Last Dragon, another original animated adventure. Raya will open in the USA and the UK on the 25th of November and as usual in Australia a week after Christmas on New Year's Eve, the 31st of December. While Raya hasn't been given an official 
official synopsis just yet, it's said to be inspired by the beautiful diverse cultures of Southeast Asia and will focus on an ancient reimagined earth inhabited by an ancient civilization that venerates and worships dragons. It will see lead character Raya, a fearless and passionate lone warrior, on a quest to find the last dragon Sisu, inspired by the auspicious water spirits of Southeast Asia. Animated features are always a highlight of the Disney calendar year for me and I'm certainly excited to sink into this one, especially considering the similar original action adventures Moana and Tangled are two of my favourite Disney animations of the last decade. The film stars Cassie Steele as Raya and Awkwafina as Sisu. It is directed by Frozen and Big Hero 6 story artists come first time directors Paul Briggs and Dean Wellens. Set for this Christmas, Warner Animation Group has announced Tom and Jerry, a CGI live action hybrid reboot of the classic cartoon duo and their first theatrical appearance since 1992's ill-fated Tom and Jerry the movie. The movie is set for release in the USA and the UK on the 23rd of December with other world wide release dates not yet clear. Again, no official material has been released for this one, but Variety reports that the story centres on Tom the Cat and Jerry the Mouse getting kicked out of their home and relocating to a fancy New York hotel, where an employee will lose her job if she can't evict Jerry. This certainly isn't much to go by, but if the film can manage to capture the charm of the early Tom and Jerry's with pure, unadulterated violence, I'm all in. The movie will feature a non-talking Tom and Jerry unlike the previous theatrical movie, thank the lord, and will star in live action roles, Chloe Grace Moretz and Michael Pena. It's directed by Shaft 2019 and Ride Along director Tim Story. Another prime contender for a possible delay is DreamWorks Animation and Universal Pictures long gestating Crudes 2, the on again off again sequel to their surprise 2013 box office hit. Crudes 2 will go head to head with Tom and Jerry with a US release set for the 23rd of December, taking the release slot previously held by DreamWorks' delayed Sing 2. Again, no visuals have been released for this one yet, though a number of very small synopses have been released by Universal which read, Prehistoric family the Crudes are back to their old shenanigans in a dangerous strange new world, facing their biggest threat since leaving the cave, another family, the Bettermans who claim to be better and more evolved. Without much to go by it's hard to form an opinion on this one, however I did find the first to be fairly enjoyable and assuming that the long delay is due to the production team taking their time with the story, I'm looking forward to seeing more. Crudes 2 will return the voice talents of Nicolas Cage, Emma Stone, Ryan Reynolds and Catherine Keener with Leslie Mann, Peter Dinklage and Kelly Marie Tran joining the mix. Finally, Sony Pictures Animation will distribute the first film from Base Animation, the brand new animation division of China Chinese visual effects company Base FX, Wish Dragon. No official release date has yet been set, so again, this could find itself bumped into 2021. Unlike some of the others, various concept art has been released for the film, which Variety has reported will be a modern day fairy tale, which picks up the moral challenges that emerge from the encounter between a boy and a dragon who is able to make wishes come true. While there's not a great deal to go by, I'm loving the concept art as well as the beautifully fantastical plot line and I can't wait to check this one out whenever it releases. As a US-Chinese collaboration, the film will receive both Chinese and English dubs. Jackie Chan, who also produces, will lend his voice to both dubs, while the English dub will also feature the voices of John Cho and Constance Wu. It is the first feature to be written and directed by Chris Appelhans, who worked in the art departments for Coraline, Princess and the Frog and Rise of the Guardians. Additionally, a number of animated features will be released exclusively to streaming services throughout the year. As very little has been revealed for any of these, including release dates, I'll briefly touch on them here. Over the Moon will release from China's Pearl Studio and Sony Pictures Imageworks and will launch on Netflix. According to Cartoon Brew, the film tells the story of a girl who builds a rocket ship and blasts off to the moon in hopes of meeting a legendary moon goddess. When she gets to the other side, she unexpectedly discovers a whimsical world filled with fantastic 
creatures, some of whom threaten her and others who ultimately help her find her way home. The film is the directorial debut of a legendary Disney animator and character designer Glenn Keane behind such classics as Beauty and the Beast, The Little Mermaid, Tarzan and Tangled. Keane is a personal favourite animator and I'm very excited for this one. Also launching on Netflix will be The Willoughbys from Canadian based Bronze Studios. It's based on the book by award winning author Lewis Lowry and set to have a stylized CG animated look. Netflix's synopsis for the film notes, when the four Willoughby children are abandoned by their selfish parents, they must learn how to adapt their old fashioned values to the contemporary world in order to create something new, the modern family. The film stars a voice cast including Ricky Gervais, whose inclusion is enough to get me excited, Maya Rudolph, Terry Crews, Will Forte, Martin Short, Alessia Cara and Jane Krakowski. It's directed by Cloudy with a chance of Meatballs 2's Chris Pern and first time director Corey Evans. Phineas and Ferb the movie, Candace Against the Universe, will launch during 2020 on Disney Plus and is the long awaited second feature length film based on the Disney Channel series. According to Deadline, the plot involves the stepbrothers in a race to rescue their sister who has been abducted by aliens and lives in a bro-free utopia on a faraway planet. The film will star the original Phineas and Ferb voice cast including Vincent Martella, Dee Bradley Baker and Ashley Tisdale and is written by series writer and story artist Joshua Pruitt. No director has been announced. And at that we come to the end of our animated movies preview for 2020. So I'm going to throw it over to you guys out there. How are you feeling about the upcoming slate of animated films for the year, are you excited or somewhat underwhelmed? Additionally, let me know what films you are most looking forward to. Fire away in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. If this is your first time viewing one of my videos and you'd like to see more like it in the future, then please don't forget to hit that big old subscribe button up on your screen, as well as that like button down below for that little extra support. Also don't forget to check me out on social media and please consider supporting me over on Patreon. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.